the 10 most expensive wines in the world. Number 10. Penfold's Grange Hermitage, 1951. Marked as the crown jewel of Australian vintages and part of Australian wine history, the bottle of Penfold's Grange, 1951, is the most expensive Australian wine ever sold at auction, fetching a whopping $104,587. I see that a bottle of 1951 Grange has been sold to a Sydney-based wine collector for a... $142,131. It's a record price for a single bottle of Australian wine. But this wasn't just any bottle. This specific bottle had the signature of Max Schubert etched onto it. The legendary winemaker and creator of the Penfolds Grange Hermitage 1951. The Penfold Winery was established in 1844 and its roots can be traced back to Dr. Christopher Rawson Penfold and his wife, Mary Penfold. Dr. Penfold and his wife, Mary, would leave England behind for the unfamiliar territories of Australia where they would start a new chapter in their lives. Upon their arrival, they purchased a vast 500-acre plot of land near Adelaide, South Australia, and christened it the McGill Estate. It was here that the legendary Penfolds Winery would be born. The couple began producing wines using French vine cuttings they brought with them from England and initially used the wines primarily for medicinal purposes, as Dr. Penfold was a physician. After a transformative visit to Bordeaux, Schubert set an ambitious goal. Craft an Australian red that could age gracefully for several decades and rival the quality of fine Bordeaux wines. Once he returned to Australia, Schubert got to work. And in 1951, Schubert unveiled Grange, a daring symphony in a bottle, a departure from all that Australia knew. When Schubert first presented Grange, he was faced with initial criticism, internal opposition and resistance. The experimental wine was unlike anything produced in Australia at the time, as it diverged sharply from the Australian wine norms in that era and was considered unsuitable for the Australian palate despite being instructed to stop production after the release of the initial vintages. Schubert continued the production of his non-wanted baby and continued to produce Grange in secrecy from 1957 to 1959. These undisclosed hidden vintages came to light several years later, as the wine started gaining recognition and acclaim for its aged quality. In the 1960s, Grange's older vintages started clinching awards and drawing attention. Its quality and potential for aging became evident. The company, once a naysayer, had no choice but to bow before its undeniable brilliance, leading to a complete reversal of the company's stance on the wine and quickly gained a reputation as Australia's finest red wine. Number 9, Chateau Lafitte, 1787. The bottle of Chateau Lafitte, 1787, which is linked to Thomas Jefferson, the third president of the United States and an avid wine collector is a subject of both admiration and controversy. The historic wine bottle, dating back over two centuries, was discovered in a concealed, bricked-up cellar at his Paris residence, which was identifiable by the THJ initials carved into the glass. The bottle garnered worldwide attention in 1985 when Malcolm Forbes, the publisher of Forbes magazine, acquired it for $160,000 at an auction in Christie's London, setting a new world record for the most expensive bottle of wine ever sold at that time. However, the Chateau Lafitte 1787's journey has been shadowed by debate. Questions about its authenticity, particularly its connection to Thomas Jefferson, have been in doubt. Adding to the tale, Forbes showcased this iconic bottle in his Forbes magazine galleries, placing it among presidential memorabilia under halogen lights. In a twist of fate, the heat from the display lights caused the cork to melt into the bottle, closing the chapter on this historical bottle and bringing the value of the bottle right down to zero dollars. Number 8. Ampoule from Penfolds. The Penfolds Ampule was released with a price tag of 168,000 Australian dollars, making it one of the most expensive wines directly sold from a winery. The Ampule project 
marries the combination of Penfolds' winemaking expertise with the craftsmanship of several Australian artists, who were instrumental to the design and creation of the bespoke ampoule and its presentation case. The ampoule from Penfolds contains the Block 42 Kalimna Cabernet Sauvignon. This wine comes from the Kalimna Block 42, a single block within the larger Kalimna Vineyard. The Kalimna Vineyard is located in the Barossa Valley, which is one of South Australia's most famous and historic wine regions. Only 12 of the Penfolds ampules were ever crafted, marking it one of the wine industry's most exclusive releases ever. In addition to its premium content, the ampules packaging stands out as an artistic masterpiece. Designed and hand-blown by artist Nick Mount, the glass vessel is specifically crafted to promote ideal ageing conditions for the wine. Prominent Australian designer maker Hendrik Forster prepared all the precious metal detailing. Renowned furniture craftsman Andrew Bartlett is the genius behind the custom-crafted Jarrah cabinet that elegantly displays the suspended ampoule. The scientific grade ampoule, designed to store the wine in the perfect environment and encased within the glass sculpture, was created by veteran scientific glass blower Ray Liak. Number 7. Chateau Margaux 1787. The significant high value of the Chateau Margaux 1787 bottle was attributed not just to its age and rarity, but also to its potential connection to Thomas Jefferson, who was known for his appreciation of wines. The estate that would become known as Chateau Margaux was originally named La Motte de Margaux, a fortified castle in the 12th century, which at the time didn't have any vines. The estate underwent significant transformation in the 16th century, when the Lestonac family acquired the property and renamed it Margaux. Pierre de Lestonac played a pivotal role in the development of Chateau Margaux. His significant contributions to the estate spanned from 1568 to 1596, during which he acquired properties in the communes of Cantenac, Margaux and Sousson. This expansion eventually led to his ownership of much of the land surrounding the Lamotte estate. Lestonac is credited for planting the first vines at the Chateau Margaux estate a pioneering step that laid the foundation for what would become one of the most celebrated wine-producing estates in the world. The Chateau Margaux 1787 was made in the Chateau Margaux estate located in the Margaux appellation of the Médoc region in Bordeaux, France. In the late 18th century, during a four-day tour, Thomas Jefferson set foot upon Bordeaux's hallowed grounds. He declared Chateau Margaux as one of the elite four vineyards of first quality and put Chateau Margaux in first place on his hierarchy of wines, and quoted, there couldn't be a better Bordeaux bottle. In the mid-1980s, Hardy Rodenstock, a renowned collector known for his ability to find extremely rare and ancient wines, stumbled upon this significant find in Paris. The bottle of Chateau Margaux from the 1787 was among a collection of other vintages, and this discovery, believed to be connected to Thomas Jefferson, stands as one of Rodenstock's most notable acquisitions. Bill Sokolin, a wine merchant based in New York, acquired the notable bottle from Rodenstock. However, this transaction didn't lead to a happy ending. In the opulent surroundings of New York's Four Seasons Hotel, amidst a lavish Margot dinner, a heart-stopping moment occurred when Sokolin inadvertently knocked over the bottle leading to its shattering on the floor and putting an end to the story of the Chateau Margaux, 1787. Number 6, Chateau Lafitte, 1869. Here in October 2010, a bottle of Chateau Lafitte, 1869, a renowned vintage, fetched a staggering $233,972 at a Sotheby's wine auction held at the Mandarin Oriental Ballroom in Hong Kong highlighting its coveted status among wine aficionados. The 1869 bottle was sold to an anonymous Asian bidder. It's not often there's a chance to bid for one of Asia's most sought-after wines, and still rarer, the wine is straight from the cellars of Chateau Lafitte Rothschild, with vintages dating back as far as 1869. Buyers in Hong Kong and China just can't get enough of Chateau Lafitte. Chateau Lafitte Rothschild, one of the most prestigious and historic wine estates in Bordeaux, was established in the late 17th century by the Ségur family. However, it was in the 19th century that the Rothschild family, 
known for their banking and wine interests, acquired Chateau Lafitte Rothschild. Today, Chateau Lafitte Rothschild is part of the Domaines Barons de Rothschild Lafitte Group, which includes several other prestigious wine estates around the world, including China, Argentina, and Chile. It continues to produce exceptional Bordeaux wines, primarily Cabernet Sauvignon based that are highly sought after by wine collectors and enthusiasts. The 1869 vintage is of particular historical significance because it was made before the widespread devastation caused by the Phylloxera epidemic. Phylloxera, a vineyard pest, decimated vineyards across Europe, making pre-Phylloxera wines exceptionally rare. And the 1869 being one of them is a testament to its rarity and history. Number 5. Heidzik Monopol Gout American, 1907. The shipwrecked 1907 Heidsieck Champagne, with its rich maritime history and prolonged underwater preservation, ranks among the globe's priciest wines. Although the selling prices at auctions have fluctuated based on the condition of each specific bottle, some have notably commanded sums exceeding $275,000 a bottle. The Heidsieck Champagne House was founded by Florence Louis Heidsieck in 1785 in Rheims, France. Florence Louis Heidsieck aimed to create a wine worthy of a queen, and he was passionate about crafting exceptional champagne. Heidsieck's champagnes quickly gained recognition amongst European royalty. The founder, Florence Louis Heidsieck, had the privilege of introducing his wines to Queen Marie Antoinette, and subsequently, the brand secured its status as a choice supplier to multiple European royal households. In the early 20th century, a freighter ship named the Jönköping was chartered to deliver goods, including many cases of the 1907 Heidsieck Champagne, to the Russian Imperial Court. The champagne was intended for the enjoyment of Tsar Nicholas II of Russia and his court. In 1916, amidst the turmoil of World War I, the freighter Jan Gürpin, while navigating towards Russia, was tragically torpedoed by a German submarine in the Gulf of Finland. The vessel met a swift end, plummeting to the bottom of the sea and taking its invaluable shipment, including the prize 1907 Heidsieck Champagne. In an unexpected twist, the depths of the Gulf of Finland provided an optimal environment for wine preservation. The combination of cold temperatures, consistent pressure and lack of light ensured that the submerged champagne bottles from the Jönköping remained in a state of near-perfect preservation. Fast forward to 1997, when a team of Swedish divers stumbled upon the shipwreck. To their astonishment, they found the cargo of champagne, mostly intact. Around 2,000 bottles were salvaged from the shipwreck. Remarkably, despite spending over 80 years at the bottom of the Baltic Sea, the champagne was still drinkable. The bottles experienced constant low temperatures and high pressure. This unique aging environment contributed to the wine's distinct character while adding new, complex tasting notes. The champagne gained its shipwrecked moniker from this story, and the bottles became highly valuable collector's items, not only because of the age of the champagne, but also due to the unique history and the tale of their preservation. Number 4. Chateau Mouton Rothschild, 1945. In 2007, a Jeroboam of 1945 Chateau Mouton Rothschild, sourced directly from Baroness Philippe de Rothschild's personal collection, was auctioned off at Sotheby's New York for an impressive $310,700,000. This sale set a record marking the bottle as the priciest wine ever auctioned up to that date. Chateau Mouton Rothschild is a wine estate located in the Poillac region of Bordeaux, France. It became associated with the Rothschild family when it was acquired by Baron Nathaniel de Rothschild in 1853. Baron Nathaniel was from the English branch of the Rothschild banking dynasty. Since 1945, Chateau Mouton Rothschild has upheld a tradition of collaborating with renowned artists for its wine labels. Esteemed contributors over the years have included Salvador Dali, Pablo Picasso, Juan Miró, and even Prince Charles. This unique approach to label design has significantly bolstered the collectability of Mouton Rothschild bottles. 
In a nod to the Allied triumph in World War II, Baron Philippe de Rothschild commissioned a special design for the 1945 vintage label of Mouton Rothschild, showcasing a V symbolizing victory. The artwork, crafted by Philippe Julien, took inspiration from Winston Churchill's iconic V for Victory gesture. This initiative laid the foundation for Mouton Rothschild's tradition of having each vintage's label designed by a famous artist. Number three, Chateau Cheval Blanc, 1947. In a Christie's auction held in November 2010, an imperial-sized bottle of the coveted Cheval Blanc 1947, which was discovered in the secret cellar of a great wine collector, sold for $304,375,000, establishing a new world record for a single bottle of wine at the time. Chateau Cheval Blanc was founded in the 19th century by a Bordeaux wine merchant named Jean-Jacques Ducasse. He acquired the property in the early 1830s and began to develop it as a vineyard. Chateau Cheval Blanc is co-owned by two prominent wine families, the Wertheimer family and the Arnaud family. The Wertheimer family, owners of the Chanel luxury brand, has been involved with Chateau Cheval Blanc since the 1990s. The family has a significant ownership stake in the estate. Bernard Arnaud, the chairman and CEO of LVMH, also owns a share in Chateau Cheval Blanc. LVMH is a major player in the luxury goods industry and owns various prestigious wine estates and champagne houses, which include Louis Vuitton, Dom Perignon, Dior, Givenchy and Sephora, just to name a few. These two families jointly own and oversee the operations of Chateau Cheval Blanc, one of the most esteemed Bordeaux wine estates, known for its exceptional Grand Cru wines. Chateau Cheval Blanc is located in the Bordeaux wine region of France. The vineyards of Chateau Cheval Blanc are situated near the town of Saint-Emilion, which is renowned for producing some of the world's finest Merlot-based wines. The 1947 Chateau Cheval Blanc is often referred to as the wine of the century, due to its exceptional quality and historical significance. It is considered one of the greatest Bordeaux wines ever produced. The 1947 vintage is intrinsically linked to the severe heat wave that happened in Bordeaux that year, which is marked in history as one of the top three hottest periods ever recorded in the region. This intense heat and extended sunlight played a crucial role in the wine's exceptional quality throughout the growing season. Number two, the Screaming Eagle Cabernet Sauvignon 1992. In the year 2000 at the renowned Napa Valley Wine Auction, Collectors and connoisseurs from around the world gathered, their eyes fixed on a single bottle. As the gavel fell, it shattered all records, the most expensive bottle ever sold, fetching an astounding $500,000. The name of the bottle, the Screaming Eagle Cabernet Sauvignon, 1992. In 1986, John Phillips established the Screaming Eagle Winery and Vineyards by acquiring a 57-acre plot in Oakville, under her vision, this property flourished with Cabernet Sauvignon vines, leading to the creation of the acclaimed Screaming Eagle Cabernet Sauvignon. In the early years, she sold her grapes to various Napa wineries. But it wasn't until 1992, with the help of winemaker Heidi Barrett, that she decided to make her own wine, starting with the first vintage of Screaming Eagle Cabernet Sauvignon. The wine quickly garnered attention and acclaim becoming one of the most sought-after and expensive wines in the Napa Valley. The Screaming Eagle winery is known for its extremely limited production. Only a few hundred cases are made each year, creating a sense of rarity and exclusivity. Screaming Eagle is very selective about its distribution. Most of its sales are made directly to a limited list of customers through its mailing list. Being on this list is highly coveted among wine enthusiasts. For many years, the winery was as been known for its reclusive nature. Both tastings and tours are strictly by appointment only, contributing to the winery's mystique. Despite being the first release, the 1992 vintage quickly gained incredible acclaim. Wine critic Robert Parker awarded it a score of 99 out of 100. Such a high score for a debut wine was almost unprecedented, and it catapulted Screaming Eagle into the limelight. Number one, Romane Conti Grand Cru, 
1945, in a record-setting auction in 2018. Sotheby's in New York witnessed the sale of a 1945 Romane Conti bottle, which fetched an astounding $558,000. This sale not only shattered the previous benchmark, but also established a new world record as the most expensive bottle ever sold at auction, cementing its status in the archives of wine history. The origins of the domain can be traced back to Prince de Conti, who acquired the vineyard of La Romane in 1760, giving it its illustrious name, Romane Conti. However, the prince did not found the domain as it is known today. The contemporary era of Domaine de la Romane Conti commenced in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. This period marked the beginning of its stewardship under two families, the de Vilaine and the Roche. Notably, Aubert de Vilaine, a prominent figure in the estate's history, contributed significantly as a co-director from 1974 to 2021, influencing its operations for an extensive duration. The renowned Romane Conti Grand Cru, a product of the esteemed Domaine de la Romane Conti, originates from the Burgundy wine region in France, specifically nestled within the confines of Vaughan Romane. This vineyard is home to some of Burgundy's oldest Pinot Noir vines, with certain vines surpassing 100 years in age. These venerable vines are known for yielding grapes that exhibit enhanced complexity and intensity, contributing to the wine's distinguished character. The 1945 vintage of Romane Conti is particularly rare due to the extremely limited production that year. Only 600 bottles were produced. This limited quantity was a result of the vineyard's replanting after the vines were uprooted to counteract a vine louse epidemic.